Pública. If you're watching this episode, I have a small favor to ask before we begin. The information shared here will be very useful for someone thinking of starting or currently running a small business. So please share it with them and let us continue to grow our economy by boosting micro, small and medium enterprises. Mr. Jonathan Ale, former business development officer now director of CEDU. With a background like that, if someone came to you today and he told you, okay, I have this great business idea. Um, I don't know where to turn to, mm -hmm. how to start, how to fund it. What advice would you give them? Okay, well, um, there's normally a process, you know, in, in starting a business. Um, we have a lot of persons with a lot of good ideas, um, but they're unsure as to how to take that idea and make it a, a reality. Um, one of the first things that I usually ask persons is um, whether there is a market for that product. Who are your customers? Who are the persons that you're supposed to get your products to? Um, and if they're able to answer and to show that, hey, there is a market for this product or service, then we could move on to the other found foundational um, things. For example, registering your business to ensure that your name is secured, um, ensuring that there is a plan. You do a business plan that would guide how you're going to run and manage this business, what targets that you're going to set for the business. Um, there are other aspects that we need to look at in terms of the, the financials. Um, what do you estimate that you need in order to start up? Because all businesses would have some sort of cost to start up. And how much would you need to start up and where would you get that money? These are all important factors that you would need to determine whether you would be able to bootstrap it, meaning that you would have the, the funds um, from family, relatives to help you to start or whether you would need to go to a financial institution. With a financial institution, again, there are guidelines that you would need to follow in order to be able to get the, the finance in there. So um, I think it, it starts with the market, whether or not there is a demand or perceived demand for whatever product or service that you intend to go into. And again, how do you intend to finance it? How do you intend to get the money that is required in order to start it up. So in all these steps you've mentioned, <coughs> what, what, from your experience, what might be the most challenging thing for entrepreneurs you've come across mm -hmm. in them actually taking that step and starting that business? Well, um, I would if say... If I had to point to one thing. Yeah, if I had to point to one thing, I'd say access to finance. Um, a lot of persons, they have good ideas but they do not have the funding in order to make it a reality. Also, I've seen persons who are already in business with, again, good businesses that look sustainable. They want to take it to the next level, but they do not have the funding or the finance that is needed in order to help them to, to scale it or to transition or to go into the export market. Because all of these various stages in business development, you would require some sort of funding in order to take your business through these various stages especially if you want to be serious and you want to be successful. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the obvious MSME loan grant facility, before the implementation of this project, this facility, what avenues were in place for entrepreneurs to get funding? Would it be the local banks? Mm -hmm. um, what thought would it be cash from their pockets? Right. How else would they have started? Up? Right. So <laughs> the options basically that exist would have been whether you'd be able to get a loan from your family members, a friend, or you um, having saved up some money, would be, you would be able to use that money to go into starting your business. 
we also had the Bell Fund, which basically served persons who are unemployed, who wanted to go into business, providing up to about 30000 in funding. Um, again, there are requirements that some persons might be difficult to meet, especially um, with regards to guarantors. You know now, persons are very hesitant to guarantee on behalf of persons because if that person does not pay, you know, the bank would be coming to you to repay the loan. And we had um, the St. Lucia Development Bank also, which um, provided support under certain um, sectors in terms of funding. And next in line after that would be the financial institutions, which are, I might say, a l not m more difficult to get financing for them, but you need to be more structured as a business. You need to show some sort of track record that you've been in business, that you have sales, that your sales would be able to cover whatever loan repayments that you would be looking for. So these were the options before, but again, the majority of persons were not able to access it because another issue was collateral. Persons didn't have the collateral that was required in order to put down to get these loans to, to ensure that, you know, in order to make the, the the financial institutions feel, you know, safer that that person would be um, serious about repaying their loan. So that is what existed in the, the ecosystem. I mean, we have the, the off fast cash and, you know, courts and these other institutions that also give loans, but these are not the, the typical um, routes that um, MSMEs take in order to find financing. Yeah. <coughs> so let's go back one year. Mm -hmm. In 2023, MSME Loan Grant Facility was rolled out by a unit part of the Ministry of Commerce. Mm -hmm. It was aimed, the loan grant in total was an estimated $10 million. Correct, yeah. And it was aimed at providing post-COVID-19 pandemic relief to registered MSMEs. Mm -hmm. A combination of 70% grant, 40% Loan. Correct. How was it received by entrepreneurs and, 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 and what, what numbers can you give me a data? How many persons applied? How yeah. many persons could have had access yeah. to this? So in terms of how it was received, I mean, the um, reception was overwhelming. Um, when the call was opened in March of 2023, um, you know, the numbers came in slowly. You, the ministry was actually concerned that, hey, I mean, but at the end of the call for applications, we had actually 513 applications, which was more than we, we actually expected um, to receive. So the, the call was overwhelming. It really showed that there was a great need amongst our MSMEs for financing, in order to either start their business, because as you mentioned, there were categories. So um, persons who wanted to start up their, their business, they had not yet been in business as yet, we call them pre-ventures. Um, they would be eligible to the 10. Persons who were in business up to two years, um, 20,000 persons who were in business over two years would be eligible for 20, 25,000. And we found that the majority almost like 60 to 70 percent of the persons who applied were persons within the established category persons who were in business for over two years and that is expected because during covid these were the persons that were most affected by the pandemic financially and you know the adverse effects that it had in their businesses so the call was overwhelming the numbers like i said overwhelming the stats show that we had almost 50-50 in terms of number of males versus number of females um, from a wide variety of sectors. We had agro-processing, we had agriculture, we had persons in services, we had the hair salons, the spas, we had um, persons that are into printing services. One of the, the services, I'm surprised that there were so many persons involved in printing, but I'm, I'm seeing now that it's, it is big business because when we see you have funerals and you have these events and you know persons usually want those sort of services. So 
across a wide variety of sectors, we saw a number of persons applying for the loan grant. Mm -hmm. The second call is out this year, 2024, and it has been extended. Mm -hmm. um, was it because that you wanted to give more persons opportunity? Um, tell us mm -hmm. about it and how it's been going. Right, so the, the call is open on the 2nd of April and the deadline was the 30th of April. But we recognize that close to the deadline date, persons who wanted to apply were just come in to register their business. Now the registration process takes time. We know that we knew that they would not have gotten their certificates in time because a copy of the certificate is required as one of the the items in order to apply. So it was decided that because we recognize that a number of persons were still lagging behind, that we extended the call in order to give them an opportunity to to basically put all of their requirements in order so that we could get a good application. Um, I want to say, Marvin, that um, one of the things we recognized on the first call that the quality of the applications were very poor. So we focused a lot under the second call on helping persons to ensure that they had the right documents, they fill out the application form properly, we provided support with the business plan, how to prepare the business plan, and we still have ongoing support happening now with the business plan and the applications and all that, just to ensure that we get a better quality application. Because a lot of the persons who did not qualify is because they didn't provide the right app, the right documentation. They didn't, the process took a lot longer because persons didn't do what they were supposed to do. So we made a special effort under this call to try to guide persons and to ensure that they provide what, they would, what was needed to improve their chances of success at the, the grant. Okay, so importantly, let's talk about the application process because mm -hmm. someone is watching this and they considering applying for the loan grant, they haven't already put in this stuff together. Tell us how could they apply right. exactly what they need to give you a good um, application. Right. <coughs> so first of all, you would need access to the documents. Um, we have all of those documents on the Ministry of Commerce's website. Um, it's ministryofcommerce.gov.lc. Um, under the MSMA loan grant, you would see the list of the documents that you would need. Um, first of all, um, I would say that you'd have to start off with the application to complete the application form fully. Um, one of the issues that we had was um, trying to get persons on the contact information. Please ensure that the contact information that you have in the application form is clear and is also correct. Um, a business plan would be required, again, we do not need a 60-page business plan. We just want to know what your business is involved in, um, how you intend to manage the business, um, the resources. Importantly, as part of the business plan, we have added a new component, which is how, how much money are you looking for? How are you going to use that money? How will it impact your, your business? So we want that at a glance we could see how the loan grant is going to affect your business because, again, we have a monitoring aspect of it, so we want to see that whatever goals that you had set, that you were able to, to achieve it. Um, again, under the first call, I guess persons thought that they would be receiving cash. So they would give an invoice for 1,000 and apply for 25 and expect that they would get 24,000 in cash. This is not that type of program. Every single disbursement would be based on invoices that you supply. So whether you're applying for the category up to 10, up to 20, or up to 25, you need an invoice for every item that you intend to purchase or every service that you plan to procure. Um, again, we found a lot of issues with persons who had said they were in business over two years because that's where the largest amount that you can apply. In. But they had no proof that they were in business for two years. So one person to provide proof that you're in business for two years. Show us some receipts, give us a letter from a customer of yours um, to show that you have been working with them or you have been in business over that period of time. Also persons who are specialists, persons who are barbers, um, who are in agriculture, we want your farmer's ID. We want your certificate to show that you, uh, you are into um, whether you are nail tech and 
all of that. We want your health card because at least we need to ensure that persons are maintaining at least basic health standards, which is for the, which is important not only for the business but for the general public to ensure that they are patronizing businesses that have those things in place. Um, some businesses who have environmental health licensing, especially those who are into food production, if you have that in place, we want to see those things. So every certification, everything that could validify that you are into that business and that you could show us proof, we need you to provide it. Um, you need two forms of ID, you need proof of address, um, we need a copy of your business certificate. Again, if you only have just a, a, your sole proprietor a partnership, just a copy of the certificate. If you are incorporated, there are a list of documents that you would have to provide, incorporation documents, all of that could be found in the checklist that we have online. So these are some of the things that you would need in order to prepare a, a good quality application that could be considered and that could be approved. This is a special episode on the MSME Loan Grant Facility. When we come back, we'll speak to a recipient of that loan grant facility and he'll give us his experience and how easy it is for you to get on board with the facility. Hi, I am Jazz. I know the excitement is building for the main stage events at Pigeon Island National Park. Kingdom Gospel Night on May 9th. Caribbean Fusion on May 10th, World Beats on May 11th, and the big finale, Ultimate Celebration on Sunday, May 12th. We anticipate increased vehicular and pedestrian traffic and want all our festival lovers and stakeholders to have a hassle-free commute to and from the festival. Several measures have been put in place. Park and ride facilities, park and sail options, and shuttle services from various points of the island to the Pigeon Island National Park. For motorists coming from the south, west, and east coasts as well as central Castries, a park and sail facility has been established at Point Seraphin. Parking is available at Vigi Multipurpose Complex, Finance Administrative Center, and along the roadside leading to duty-free Point Seraphin. Boarding is at the Tender Jetty and Berth 2 Point Seraphin. Ferry tickets will be available at each location. The ferry service will take you to and from Jam Dubois at Pigeon Island National Park. Once berthed, you can purchase festival tickets at the Jam Dubois Jetty to enter the venue. Security protocols will be in full effect. Commuters in the island's north can select any of the following park and ride options. Orange Grove Plaza, Aquatic Center, Johnson's Hardware Car Park, Western Union and Johnson's Hardware Grounds opposite the Harbor Club as well as at the Darren Sammy Cricket Grounds, which is the main hub. Shuttle tickets will be sold at all park and ride locations. The shuttle drop-off service when coming to the venue will take you to the festival gate at Pigeon Island National Park. The shuttle pickup point at the close of each event is at the Clico lot past the Pigeon Island Causeway at the junction of the landings and Pigeon Island Causeway. No shuttles will be allowed to travel along the Pigeon Island Causeway or access the venue gate at the close of the events. For your safety, only use official shuttle buses which will be branded and labeled for each parking facility. Please match your return Welcome back to this important edition of the MSME Loan Grant Facility. I'm here with the director of CEDU, Mr. Jonathan Ale, and as we wrap up a conversation with him, um, He'd like to make an important point, I think, our applicant should hear. Right. So, um, Marvin, as we were discussing, um, we want persons to know that um, the loan grant is an opportunity that is here right now for persons to grow and develop their business. Um, I cannot say that there would be another program like this where persons would be able to um, take advantage of. But one of the things that we one person to know that this is the opportunity you have right now to take your business to the next level. This is the stepping stone that is being presented to businesses to, to get your, your house in order, to get your business in order, to get the things that you need in order for your business to grow and to develop. We want persons from after this point that they would be able to face the banks because they have started keeping their records, they've been um, keeping track of their sales and their expenses and they could bring it to the bank and say hey 
I would like a loan in order for me to expand because I have done all of those things. So we want persons to, to take the, the opportunity granted under this project very seriously in the developing of their business and allow it to take them to a next level and not, you know, be at that point where you need another loan grant and another loan grant in order for your business to, to stay in business. You know, work at it, use the funding the way it's supposed to be done and allow it to develop your business so that you could grow to the next stage of the business life cycle. And that is a great way to end our conversation with the director, but not forgetting, we will be joining a recipient when we come back. So this is Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival 2024. Just tell me how much time left so I know. Show as Joe Boy takes the stage. Ready for an electrifying performance from R&B powerhouse Chloe Bailey. Then it's time to shift gears with two-time Latin sensation John Cicado. And the compa harmonies of vibe. St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival 2024. April 30th to May 12th, 2024. Start planning your trip. Experience this in Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival 2024. Get ready for one epic fete with Caribbean Fusion on May 10th. You don't want to miss Marshall Montano ignite the stage with Soka Fire. And Paris Hammond brings the sweet melodies of Lovers Rock. Then dive into the conscious reggae vibes with Misha. St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival 2024, April 30th to May 12th, 2024. Start planning your trip. So this is planting flower from Mitchell Moss Mixes. And I would assume you are Mitchell. That's correct. So tell me about this planting flower. OK. And where can I, where can I or the viewing public purchase it? Purchase it. OK. For starters, it is not just planting flower. It's actually a planting flower pancake and pastry mix with sea moss flakes. So this product here is my very own creation. You won't find it anywhere else on the planet. It is basically a superfood in the sense that, for one, we use our local CMOS, which we know is world renowned. The CMOS alone has n about 92 of the 102 minerals that the body needs for its daily function. The plantain flower is gluten free. So it's actually recommended for persons with diabetes and so on. Persons who are on the healthier side of things. If you have a little issues of going to the, the loo, you know, if you want to lose weight, if you just want to have a healthy, energy-packed breakfast or even dinner, this would be a beautiful alternative. And the, the taste is one that cannot be rivaled, that cannot be compared to any other plantain or any other pancake, sorry, on the market. Um, we've had very, very good reviews. It is a delicious product. And um, where you can find it, it is available at Massey stores now and at Glass Supermarket and a few other um, stores. We are working on getting it into the hotel industry and so on as we go along. Mitchell Moss Mixes. Yes. You're a recipient of the MSME Loan Grant Facility. Yes, I am. Advertise this facility to someone like me thinking of applying and how, how has it really helped your business? Okay, um, to be very honest, one has to have the passion to actually want to grow their business. I would say if you have that hunger, that desire to grow your business, 
the MSME loan grant facility is a wonderful, wonderful option. It has taken me from a, a, a place where we had to struggle to get um, things off the ground, struggle to be able to, to, to process the actual product to a, a stage where we can actually supply major chains like Massey stores because the facility enabled us to get the equipment needed to get to that level. Without that help, we would not have been able to do that or it would have been very difficult. Like um, Mr. Ali said, you would have to get a loan from friends and family and these things. And you know these things have a lot of difficulty in themselves. The loan, um, the MSME loan grant facility, you have to be prepared. You, they will provide you with assistance at the Ministry of Commerce. They will walk you through the process. If you're having any difficulties, you can always call them. They will guide you. But you, as an individual, you have to be serious. For one, if, you're, if you have a small business and you want to grow, you want to provide a service, you have to take it seriously. You cannot look at it as, oh, this is free money. It is not free money. It is an opportunity for you to grow your business, to get to a point where you can provide a service to your community, to your nation, and in part, pay back, give back, provide jobs or something along the lines as you go. It is a wonderful opportunity. How easy or difficult was the application process? I would say um, middle of the range. Yeah. Um, but if you are serious, that would not be an issue. If you are hungry, that will not be an issue. It will not be an issue. Listen, for those of us who already have driver's licenses, did we give up on the first attempt? No. If you failed? No. Because why? You want to have your license. The same way if you want to get your business going, you want to take it to the next level, you will do what is necessary to do that. Plain and simple. If you don't have the passion, you won't be, you won't be driven. You, won't, you can't expect for somebody to push you to fulfill your own dreams. It's yours. You have to want to do it. And that's all. The, whatever you lack, whatever experience, whatever guidance you need, the Ministry of Commerce is there to facilitate that. They are there to help. So you're not going through this on your own. They are there to help. So let's point to you receiving, you getting approved for a loan grant. Mm -hmm. You said you moved from a small stage mm -hmm. now providing to large yes <coughs> large um importers yes. um, exporting your product to mm -hmm. Marcy yes, and so tell me what funds you receive and how did it exactly enable you to now distribute was it a machine you bought was it did it um, make you bring on more employees how exactly did that loan grant help well okay the, the finances that we received, we put it directly into getting equipment needed. Dehydrators, mills, um, racks, and these things. Things that were re required to help us along with the production process. Getting packaging, you know, all of these things. Um, that enabled us to become more efficient that enabled us to ensure that the quality of the product was always top quality. It was, it was what the customer would expect to get when they purchase a packet. The quality would, be, would always be the same. The, the, just, just ensuring that we maintained a certain level and um, that we were able to serve and service the public um, the way that we would want another provider to do for us, so to speak. Mitchell Moss Mixes, thank you so much for coming on in this special program and encouraging other small entrepreneurs like you to take part in the MSME Loan Grant Facility. I would just like to add that prospective businesses may, be, may apply for funds up to $10,000 while businesses in existence more than two years can seek up to 20,000. And as existing businesses for over two years can access up to 25,000. The deadline for the MSME Loan Grant Facility is May 31st, 2024. If you're watching this program and it's not May 31st, you still have an opportunity to apply. My name is Marvin St. Louis. This is 
TV40 from the Government Information Service. Yeah.